Hello and welcome to the ThinkBoard video. So what is ThinkBoard? Well, ThinkBoard is basically Papyrus Author's mind mapping portion of the software. Now, this can be used in many different ways. For instance, let's say you're the kind of author that likes to completely outline their books in advance. You can use the ThinkBoard to do that and it will create links uh, from your outline directly into your chapters and scenes. The way I personally use it is to troubleshoot my books. Um, so if I hit an issue with a chapter, a scene or a character, I put those issues, those problems into ThinkBoard so I can visually see the problems, then I can break those problems down and resolve them. So with that said, let's jump in and take a look at ThinkBoard. What I thought I might do just before we jumped in is show you uh, the ThinkBoard from Papyrus Author's sample project, which is Tarzan, just to show you um, what your ThinkBoard might look like uh, as you propagate it. Okay, the first thing you want to do is open ThinkBoard, and that can be done in one of two ways. If you click on this icon down at the bottom, it will open ThinkBoard to the side of your main document. And that can be resized simply by dragging and dropping to whatever size you want. However, if you want to open ThinkBoard in a full tab, so it's full screen, simply come up to this icon in the top toolbar and click it. Okay, so since this video was first made, there's been a new menu added to Papyrus called Author. And this contains all the tools that you might need uh, for creating your book. So you can now also open ThinkBoard from this menu. To create a bubble, simply double click anywhere on the open space and enter your text into the bubble. As soon as you click out the bubble, it will set it as, as the bubble, so it can then be dragged. To create another bubble, just do the same thing again. And again, as soon as I click outside of the bubble, it will set the text. You can edit this text simply by clicking back into the bubble. If you want to join two bubbles together, drag one bu bubble on top of another and it will instantly create a line. If you want to make a duplicate of any bubble, if you hold down your control key and drag it, it will make a duplicate. And you could edit this. This could be useful if you've set up a certain style for one bubble and you like that style. So, uh, And again, I could link these together simply by dragging one over the top of the other. Okay. You can change the appearances of the bubbles by right clicking on them and you could select shape and change the shape. You can change the color by right clicking and picking a new color. You can change the thicknesses of the lines that surround the bubble. And you can add a status from these icons here. You can also change the thicknesses of the lines that connect the uh, bubbles. So you could change the width and you could also add arrows and you can change the color. All from right clicking and selecting what you want. You can also group items. So if you select all of these bubbles, holding down control and selecting the bubbles, I can then right click and go group items. You might want to group items if all of these ideas, for instance, were for chapter one. So you could add a title to that group and call it, for instance, chapter one. And then you know that all the ideas within this group are for that chapter. Okay, so that was the basics of just how to create uh, bubbles and groups. 
So what I'm going to show you now is how you could turn those groups into chapters and scenes. So I'm not going to put too much detail in each bubble or in each group, but you could put really detailed synopses into each of the bubbles and groups. You can then use those groups to generate your chapters and scenes. So in by using ThinkBoard in this manner, you can fully outline your book in advance in quite a lot of detail. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so what we're looking at here is one group, an outer group, which will represent your chapter, and the inner groups are the scenes to your chapters. Anything that was in within those scenes, and it could be a synopsis, can be turned into something like an event. So if I right click on this one, this could be an event. If I right click on it and go event, it will turn it into an event. So that when we drag this into the main document, it will create chapter one, scene one with the synopses and scene two with an event. So if I click onto the main document and drag that in, you can see that it's created chapter one with scene one and scene two and the event. So how did I create those groups? Well, the first thing you do is anywhere in the white area, you right click and you go new group. And you would call that whatever you want. So I've just created chapter two and it's heading is Jack of all trades. I would then create another new group by right clicking on this external area and go new group. And this is the scene. So I would go scene one. I would then drag that scene group inside the main group, which is chapter two. So I now have chapter two with one scene. If I wanted to add elements to this scene, again, I can double click and I can go, this is where Jack dies. And I can drag that bubble into the scene. And because he's dying, that is an event. So I would right click on it and create an event. If I go new group again, this could be scene two, Jack comes back to life. And I can drag that in to the group and that's created that scene. You don't actually have to add anything into it. It will, even an empty group like this will create the scene. So if I go back to the main document by clicking on Think board pap. I'll enter, or I'll insert a page break, and I'm now going to drag chapter two into the main document. And as you can see again, it created chapter two with scene one, the event where Jack dies, and scene two where Jack comes back to life. In the navigator, you can see the icons for each of the uh, ThinkBoard events I've created or ThinkBoard groups I've created. So if I click on this chapter one icon, it will instantly take me to that chapter one in the ThinkBoard. If I click on the scene one, it will highlight the scene. And again, that works in reverse. So if I right click on this scene and go jump to text, that wasn't very dramatic because um, I haven't got any text in it, but I'll do it with this one. So here's scene one of chapter one. If I right click and go jump to text, it will immediately take me to the text of chapter one. Okay, so this is the text that's been put in from the groups. So as you can see, uh, Jack leaves home. Scene one, Jack leaves home is here. And this bubble could be the synopsis, which is here. Now, you can either delete this and enter your 
your text because the synopses will still be in your um, think board groups or you could ghost it and this is the ghost icon and by ghosting it it high it sort of hides the text when you export and you can choose to leave this text out if you for instance export to um, a word document that you're sending to the editor so basically by turning it to ghost text only you can see it so if this was a detailed synopsis here and you had a detailed synopsis here you could ghost it and keep referring back to it and anything you added after would be normal text okay right so since making uh, the original video uh, Thinkboard has had an update and that update is the ability to add images which is really great if you like uh, images or visual aids to help you with your planning. So those images can come from absolutely anywhere. They can come from a folder on your hard drive, uh, your pin board, um, the main document or even the internet. So for instance if I drag this in here um, I can then double click on it and add a title. just in the same way as I can for any other element that I take into ThinkBoard. Like I say, you can also bring them in from your pin board. And what I'll do is I'll go back to full screen um, and position that a bit nicer. And you can also drag in from the internet. So I've got a web page open on my other monitor. I can drag that in and release. It will take a second because it's obviously downloading that image from the internet. And there you go, you can drag those images around in exactly the same way as you I ex explained in the previous part of the video for groups uh, and think bubbles. Okay, so there you have it. That was the uh, think board video. Uh, so whether you use it to completely outline your book in advance or whether you use it like me to troubleshoot the problems as you go, it's a really great tool for visualizing your concepts your thoughts and your ideas. So until next time, I'll see you later.